Hey guys, what's going on today? I got a video on G2A. I recently made a few videos talking about G2A as a platform to buy your PC games from. And after I made those videos, I got a few comments from people telling me that I shouldn't promote G2A because it's a scamming site and it doesn't support developers and a whole mess of other things. While in part, some of these comments are very valid, but there are some issues with a few of the statements that some of these people make. Uh, all of the controversy surrounding G2A basically started with a company named Tiny Build, who are known for games like Punch Club, Party Hard, and Speedrunners. Tiny Build released a chart showing that G2A had sold over $450,000 worth of keys for their games, and Tiny Build received absolutely no compensation for any of the keys that were sold. Now, when you hear that, it sounds really bad, and it looks like G2A is a horrible company and should be instantly condemned. However, you need to look at what G2A actually is and how it operates. Alex Nichiporchik, I don't know how to say his name, basically the CEO of Tiny Build, put it best when he said G2A is like eBay for game keys. Honestly, that is the most accurate comparison that I can think of. G2A works with a few game developers and sells games at a set price, much like Steam or any other game selling website. However, G2A is mostly known for their open marketplace, where anyone such as you or I can sell games at whatever price we set. This seems to be the main issue that people have, is that G2A created a platform that anyone can use and that some people argue it encourages fraud and false sales. However, G2A really can't be faulted because the keys that are being sold on their website are actually real keys, for the most part anyway. The issue that people have is that they're buying keys from bundling sites using stolen credit cards and then they proceed to sell those stolen credit card bought games at a low price to try and move the games quickly before the developers realize that the charge was from a stolen credit card. The merchants who make the most money on G2A are avid users of the dark web who buy and sell stolen credit card information. They then use those credit cards to buy keys and then sell them. So let's get into a quick hypothetical. Hypothetically speaking, let's say one of these merchants buys a stolen credit card that has say a $500 limit. I would estimate that would go for around $200 on the dark web seeing as they would need to sell it at a low price in order to move it quickly before the actual owner of the credit card uh, realizes that the information was stolen. So let's say it was sold at $200, much lower than the actual credit limit. If they were to take that credit card and max it out on a game bundling site, let's use Humble Bundle for an example, um, using the current Humble Bundle sale, which is the Humble 2K bundle, the merchant would need to spend $15 to get 12 games plus some extra DLC content for some of those games. With a $500 credit card, they would be able to buy 33 full bundles. So even if they sold each key for $1, they would actually make profit from the, uh, from the initial investment. And they can just continue that cycle. Now, that's really where I feel the problem is. You know, there's a lot of problems with people using the dark web to buy these credit cards and then max them out on game keys and sell them. And G2A isn't the only website that has this issue. It happens a lot on Kinguin, a few Reddit threads where people sell their games. It's actually a very common thing. However, G2A is just the most popular because it's the most known platform because they have some of the biggest YouTubers and esports competitors sponsored. So you're getting like, I think PewDiePie was sponsored at one point. Just to have PewDiePie alone nearly has 50 million subscribers. You have PewDiePie make a video about you, you're instantly just one of the most famous gaming companies there is. So that's just a little part of why I think G2A is really being targeted right now. Another thing that happened, um, G2A is based in Hong Kong, so there are some translation issues when they, you know, sent emails to Tiny Build. Tiny Build was asking for compensation, however, because their stolen keys 
hypothetically, you know, they're kind of stolen, but not really. They're bought real, but on a fake credit card, so they get charged back, you know, whatever. Because they actually didn't get paid for that, Tiny Build decided to email G2A looking for compensation. G2A refused because really there's nothing you can do, like, you know, whatever. But G2A made a counter offer suggesting that G2A and Tiny Build work together, much like they do with other game developers, to try and set a standard price and have their games sold on G2A similar to how they would be on Steam. Tiny Build didn't really seem to enjoy that offer too much. I don't know if it was just because of the aggressiveness that G2A was going after. They were kind of just in a sticky situation. They were really just, you know, they were getting hammered by a lot of YouTubers and a lot of people in the gaming community. They were pushed back into a corner. And I think, you know, they were just in a mode to defend themselves, you know. I don't really know the actual situation, but it seemed a little aggressive and Tiny Build wasn't too happy. But G2A emailed them suggesting that they work together. Alex didn't like that. So, really, what I think they should do, and in my personal opinion, it may sound shitty, I think Tiny Bill should actually do it. They should team up with G2A and just make it a means to sell their game on another platform. It's less likely to get scammed that way. You know, you don't get a whole lot of people on Steam getting scammed. It's just a much safer alternative. However, another thing they could do is they could actually just work with G2A and look at these mar like these merchants, look at the market and see who's making the most money and track to see if they're actually making that money legally. Like it's just it seems like that would make the most sense. I don't know why they don't, you know, just take action legally, try and sue whoever's doing this. It's not too like complicated but i think just the tension between the two companies after this whole event took place i think that's what's really holding back you know the progress of solving this problem but in all honesty if g2a were to close today a new website with the same business practice will take over and support like the same methods and the issue would persist anyway whether it be Kingwin to pop up next, or some Reddit threads, or a whole new website, I don't think this model of game selling is ever going to go away. I think it's just blown up, and it's going to be here to stay for a while now. So in closing, no, I don't think G2A is really that bad or a scam site, because honestly, they're pretty much just doing what they feel is right. You know, people come at them with, game keys they say hey here are a couple real keys i want to sell them somebody buys them transactions made g2a has no real knowledge of knowing whether or not the keys were stolen the developers don't even know if the keys were stolen they can't track that until you know the game key is activated or any method at all it's really hard to track that so i don't think g2a is really the bad guy in this situation i think Neither one of them is bad. I think it's just a really shitty situation, and it's obviously the person who's going over and buying these stolen credit cards that's the bad guy. It's just a really hard situation to deal with, and I really have no solution other than trying to get them to work together. But that's all I got to say. If you guys enjoyed what I said today, leave a like in the video, comment what you guys think on this whole issue, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.